Hi! In this video you will see the exact step in chronological order how we converted this box truck into this tiny house. This is our third build. We used so much knowledge provided by so many people on the internet that we couldn't have built this truck without it. Now, we would like to return the favor by making these sort of videos. So I hope you can draw some inspiration for your project. Consider subscribing and turn on that notification bell thingy to not miss one of those videos. Before buying this truck, we spent a lot of time researching and planning the build. We used a free 3D program named SketchUp to draw out the interior design. Then we went searching for a box truck with the exact dimensions of our 3D layout. That turned out to be this Duff LF55. We like it because it's Dutch. It can handle a lot of weight. It's fairly new. It's an automatic. It has cruise control. And the box is made out of strong plywood and gave us enough confidence to build a house in. We wanted straight walls. We got corners that go like this, which is kind of convenient. We started with making a wooden frame for the floor and the walls. We used wooden beams with a dimension of 38 mm by 65 mm. And this is just mainly to give the van its support, especially there where the windows are. First we're making the frame and then we're just going to glue it together all at once. Then we started cutting the holes for the windows, the door and the garage drawers. Because of our SketchUp design, we knew exactly where to cut the holes and where to place the wooden beams. Then, we built a strong frame for the elevated platform and also placed these Tatford hatches where later the garage drawers would be. Place the brackets on the inner side of the door. Then we started insulating and putting the first wires in place. On the floor we used rigid foam insulation. We created a small air gap underneath the rigid foam so that the floor of the box truck has room to breathe. We made sure the insulation to be airtight by filling the cracks and crevices with spray foam. We also added aluminium tape. On the walls we used rock wool insulation which later we made airtight by adding a climate foil. When there is condensation when there is water uh, trapped between the insulation and the outer wall, that the water can always find its way out through the ventilation of the cabin. That's why we got the, the foil, the climate foil. After finishing the floor insulation, we placed plywood with an epoxy finish and placed the sliding patio doors, which we bought secondhand. Um, we got the glass in the windows. We even got like the proper door in. We also got the roof holes and placed the Dometic Hecky 2 roof windows and the Max Van. And then we already fitted a cubic grizzly stove in order to know exactly where to place the wooden beams behind it. How long are we uh, doing this now? August, September, November, December. Yeah, so it's four months. So we're into four months. After we placed the rock wool, we started with the climate foil. The main goal here is that our isolation becomes airtight. First we stapled the foil into the wood and then we used an insulation tape where the foil overlapped. Then we made the garage drawers. And we also already started with the cladding. We used plywood with an Okime finish. We got the first cladding in, which we're really happy about. On the roof we used 8mm and on the side we used 10mm. And on this side we used a cheaper plywood also of 10 millimeters because we wanted to paint it black. We first gave it a black primer, then we have a paint to finish it up, and then a third paint to finish it to finish it up. So, uh, yeah, we're making progress. The Okime we farnished to protect the wood and make the nerve, well, look nice. After finishing the elevated platform, we installed the IKEA kitchen and modified it to our needs. At the same time we started building the frame for the bathroom. Here you see what's running underneath the kitchen. And that grey one is the, the heater, and we've got the red one, the hot water, the blue one, the cold water, and it's all running behind the kitchen. Then I started working on the bigger garage, which was our last hole to make. Shouldn't be that hard. If it's. When the garage was in place, I started installing the water system and the electrical system. So the gas, the electricity, the water all happens 
in there. We'll do a more in-depth video about both systems in the future. The shower walls are not made of plywood but plasterboards. We waterproofed everything by using waterproof tape, silicon sealant, a membrane and waterproofing paste. Here you can see we already made a hole for the plumbing, the water mixer tap, the ventilator and the toilet. So we're in the, the last phase of the build. It's been an interesting, I think for like seven months, we started in August, so it's, it's, it's been a ride. Here you can see that we're almost finished with the water system, the electrical system, the gas system and the diesel heater. This gas bottle is just temporarily, so we can already have warm lunch. At last, we installed the Cubic Mini Grizzly. We customized the flue pipe so that we can slide it out when we use the stove and slide it in when we drive. If you're interested in how we did this, let us know in the comments. In total, we've spent a year building our tiny house truck. If you want to know the total cost, here is a video for you. It's amazing how it started as a wild idea, then slowly but surely turned into reality, and now we live in what we have created. I hope this video helped you in your project. See you in the next one.